Well, what we have today is what turned out to be a 28 hour adventure that included our first ever car camping experience, eating at a historic diner in the middle of the desert, stumbling across an entire town that is for sale. And ultimately we would make our way to our main destination just over the border in Arizona. Off we go. We're going to Kingman, Arizona. Um, this is a request from my mother. A few years back, I had found um, my uncle's gravesite. He died in 1994, and we didn't know where he was buried or when he died or what happened. And I went through um, some genealogy and I one day landed on uh, where he was buried and it was kind of big for us because it's a very sad story and we just wanted an ending to it so off we go to his gravesite at my mom's request to um, pray over his grave and um, kind of do a final goodbye for my uncle Jeff so a couple of things that are unusual with this trip we are doing this back and forth to Arizona on an overnighter. We're not gonna have a hotel anywhere. We are, at our age, we're gonna be doing our first ever car camping experience. So a few videos back, we did a review of this mat that we bought, the Exped mat, and we bought a size specifically to fit in the back of the van. So tonight we're gonna sleep in the back of the van in the middle of the desert somewhere halfway between home and Arizona so we don't have to drive as long tomorrow. Yeah. And maybe we'll also, during our one and a half day journey, see some sights along the way. So we'll see what happens. There's our bed for the night. So we are Harvest Host members and we decided to go with Harvest Host because there's a little bit more safety, I think, that is their kind of without saying so. So we're hoping that this turns out well. I think it will. But well, we finally arrived in Yermo, California at 8 p.m., which gave us enough time to grab a glass of wine at Peggy Sue's Diner. Uncle Jeff. Okay, so I have a burgundy at Peggy Sue's Diner. Uh, almost. It's after 8, right? After 8 o'clock at night. So I can be in Kingman tomorrow morning. Tomorrow. It's morning. Mm -hmm. Do you sleep? I slept some. Uh, Those are the comfiest. So I think between the not being a mattress and then just the noise outside, we gotta. Oh, that didn't bother me. No. I thought it would, but it didn't. Yeah, it's kind of like white noise. Yeah. After a while, we had a big semi next to us. There's a few semis in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. We did it. <laughs> it was an experience. Car camping. I suppose there's a bit of a feeling of safety when you've got a series of U.S. Army tanks right at the edge of your uh, sleeping area. Hey, and, and the, the best thing about the night was because we weren't in a hotel, we weren't even in our RV, we didn't have to get up to go to the bathroom. Because <laughs> that, that was your concern. Oh, yeah, my yeah. big concern. Yeah. It's huge. You almost didn't want to do this because I, you thought, what, me, oh my me, gosh, what if? Let me show you. You gotta, sh I, you gotta I, show I made, me? I have precautions. You have plans? Yes. But no fear because Julie was prepared with the just in case. What do you got, lady? Emergency pee bags. <laughs> I have no idea. I was prepared. All right, you told me you were prepared. I trust you. I. I actually would be okay. <laughs> but, yeah, you'd be fine. But, he would be fine. But, yeah. 
but, but not me. Always be prepared. That's always your be motto. Prepared. Okay. You said those had good reviews, whatever those yes. gizmos are. Yes. For the ladies. They're for men too. Not for this man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so at Peggy Sue's Diner, something we've passed by a, a couple of times, you probably more than I, and it is a retro 50s diner that, like you have said, is in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And it is a place to go. It's like that marker, that place to go for many people to experience this 50s diner style eating experience. Yeah. So this building, originally, it was a home that was converted into a pie shop in 1954. And whoever this person is that made this conversion, I, I still don't know who it is, used spare parts and materials from the nearby Union Pacific Railroad Yard. So eventually, Peggy Sue and her husband, Champ, who were theater people, reopened the diner in 1987. You walk in and you have this huge jukebox. Good morning, Betty. And there's an image of Betty Boop. And the waitresses were dressed in their traditional style um, dining outfits. Do we just sit in here? Or? There's not a reserve sign. Alrighty. And there's a vintage style ice cream counter. There's a classic roadside diner, food fair, whatever you want to call it, menu. So this is one of those places I remember over the years driving by on route to Vegas or other places and um, always wanted to say I always wanted to go there. Right. Finally made it. You're here. I always my Martinez. It's in a good spot. Glad we made it. Breakfast. There's so much to see, you can hardly get it all in. Of 50s era pop culture paraphernalia, such as movie posters and celebrity photos that are signed. Peggy Sue is in a lot of these photos, and, and Champ is also. And they have some funny sayings on the wall. They have a lot of well-known actors and actresses all over the wall, including Lucille Ball, Marilyn Monroe, John Wayne, Elvis Presley. And they also have a lot of imagery from famous movies like Wizard of Oz. And yeah, so there's Gone stuff. With the wind, I think, was yeah, one there's movie. stuff for your eyeballs. Yeah, it's everywhere. Everywhere you look. Yeah, but it was fun. Yeah, and in addition to all that stuff, they also, you know, being a 50s diner, add to that ambiance with the music that they pipe in. So as we were there, it was kind of a mix of 50s and 60s. 60s. So, you know, they go back away on the, uh, the music. So it kind of takes you back in time yeah. that way too. Yeah. At one point you went out to the bathroom and then the waitresses got quite a chuckle because they uh, sensed that you may have been surprised. <laughs> yes, that's so weird. So I went in there and I just hauled it to the first stall and used the facilities and I went out to wash my hands and there was a man in the bathroom and I just went, oh my gosh, am I in the wrong bathroom? And it was a mannequin that was made to look like he was peeing in a urinal. So it was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> so we were done eating, you know, which is the one of the things that you do there, and started to leave, and you went, I forget why you went another direction, but I went another direction, and just as I was leaving, they were opening up the gift shop. Mm -hmm. And the gift shop was huge. It was huge. Full on store. I couldn't believe how big it was. Yeah. And they had a lot of stuff in the gift shop that was also kind of, you know, throwback items to the 50s and the 60s. I mean, lots of tchotchkes. Shirts, puzzles, games, dinosaur-related items. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. In the back, they have some metal roadside dinosaur sculptures in what they call their diner sore Park. Get it? Ar, 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 ar. Get it? So we really appreciated the very big, large parking lot. Mm -hmm. Some of it was paved, but uh, most of it was gravel, yeah. but it still worked very well. And it was nice to take advantage of that halfway spot there and uh, be able to park the van. Yeah. We just got turned off of I-15 towards US-95, I think, on our way to Arizona, passing through the town of Nipton where there's a sign that said that the entire town is for sale. So somebody, you, 
can buy an entire town. You can become the mayor. You can probably change the name from Nipton to your name. Dennis and Phil. Oh, no. Did I say that? And rule over this vast landscape. <laughs> and then we're driving closer to, I guess it was the town of Nipton. And then in that, I'm going to call it a town, you could see that in the middle of the desert, there's some mature trees, there's some buildings. Yeah, the minute I saw the trading post in that little area over there, I was like, ah, we're pulling over. You pulled us over. And next thing I know, we're doing a little bit of exploration because this is an oldish looking town. It looked like there was some history there. It looked like there were some things to at least quickly explore, take some photos. So we're in Nipton. It's a historic town that apparently was established early in the 1900s. Has a Hotel California, a cafe, a trading post, and maybe a hiking trail or something. And it is for sale. The entire town is for sale. And it's a really cute little town. So, are you gonna check it out? We're gonna check it out. We stumbled across some signage about the history of the town. There was like this old, not functioning hotel. It was labeled the Hotel California. I can live in that. So when you buy the town? When you buy the town. And live in Hotel California? Yeah, I'm gonna convert it. Cause it's got lots of rooms in it. You know, it probably has a kitchen already. It has water, electricity. You can convert it, and that's your house. It has a zero escape yard. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Keep your water bills down. Yeah. Never have to water it. <laughs> there was this, I think, what used to be a restaurant or a place for drinks, and there were there was tables set up there that were nice. on the outside just begging for cold beers to be laid out. Nice. Yeah. Very thick wooden tabletops. Very yeah. long. It's very nice. This is a, um, a townish kind of area where there's just kind of one main road that makes its way right through town. So this stuff was on one side of the street. On the other side of the street was an RV park, a very small one it looked like. It almost looked ghost towny, but but not a hundred percent. On January 1st, 1900, a gold seeker from Pennsylvania named S.D. Carnes stake perhaps the earliest claim in the area. And then the railroad came. Right. Originally called Nepeno Camp after a nearby gold discovery. It was changed to Nipton when the SPLA and SL merged with the Union Pacific, circa 1910. So this had to have been a railroad stop once upon a time, and it was probably bustling in the, in the early 1900s. Customer. Oh, so are we like your first ever? First, yeah, it'll be oh, our first, first. Are you like, kidding? This is a historic Never. moment, Julie. Yeah, we okay, hold be, on. Uh, hold on, we have night, to. Last night I had a hose. We're recording. How are you? Yeah. Are you okay if I out. videotape? What do you have on yet? Because apparently we're, we're the first purchase here, so. Yep. We will broadcast out to the world that people can get their honey here. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Honey and snacks. And There's nothing like local honey, by the way. Yeah, so. it's perfect. It's yeah. perfect. Cool. And if you oh. out some yeah. treasures, like uh, that fan, uh, my mom brought it back from Hong Kong in 89. And I love it. It's cool. I'm super fine. Yeah. That's some pretty historic stuff here. Yeah. This is an old uh, train rail car. Right, we, we were oh, just reading okay. all the. That's Signage. Hotel California. It's, I mean, get to go outside. That's really it. cool. All right, just leaving magical. Ma and it was magical. <laughs> Nipton. Nipton. So a ran totally random pullover as we're on this road, which we're the only car on, got out, started to explore the remnants of what used to be a place. You want to jump back into the 60s? Go to Nipton. Yeah. Welcome to Nevada. We just passed over the state line into Nevada on the Joshua Tree Highway is what we're on. And then he made a, I thought, you know, it was an interesting comments as we were leaving. He was 
asking us where we were going, and we mentioned we're going to visit your uncle's gravesite in Arizona. Yeah. And he was talking about losing his dad. And he made this uh, reference to the scene in Star Wars where... Obi-Wan Kenobi gets killed by Darth Vader. But was he killed? Well, yeah, he kind of made the comment about, you know, sometimes, you know, people make, make even a bigger impact on people's lives after their passing. Right. And I think... Interesting. And I think you think about it. I mean, I I, yeah. I see that. I, yeah, you know, oh, absolutely. We've, I absolutely. think, been struck with that with people that we've known. I, I'm struck with it right now because I'm taking a journey to see my uncle who's been gone since 1994. Yeah. So interesting on these uh, random road trips, you know, we had no thought that we would be, one, on this highway that we're on, didn't have Nipton on the itinerary. So, you know, one of the things that was neat about that stop, though, was not only just getting out to see the things to look at, you know, historic markers, remnants of the town, but actually having the opportunity to talk to some some of the folks. Yeah, that yeah. kind of brought it to a different level. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. En route to Arizona. After that, we made our way to Kingman, Arizona. So I think that was another couple hours in the car. Couple hours. So this was the, the destination that started us off on this trip to begin with. We were actually making our way to a cemetery in Kingman, Arizona, called Mountain View. It was a promise made, and my uncle is buried there. We found out that he was dead, unfortunately. And in 2007, sometime after that, I found out where he was buried. Long story, sad story, my mom's youngest brother, only brother, and I made a promise to her. So I think that sometimes I say things and you just kind of say, okay, let's mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. <laughs> it was kind of like, okay, let's do it. Let's fulfill the promise and let's do it. Plus, with genealogy, you know, that's one of the main places that you get information is death records and cemeteries and it tells a lot as part of that person's story. When we got to the cemetery you had mentioned that that over a few years in trying to find out where your uncle was buried and having difficulty finding that that you kind of stumbled across that by almost by accident somebody had posted a photo mm -hmm. of the grave marker. Grave marker. Yeah. There are people that will go to certain cemeteries and they will take pictures of people they don't know, but they'll take pictures of gravestones and they'll take that information and that picture and post it to sites that are dedicated to helping people find where grave sites are. Yeah. You know, you can look on names. If you're in genealogy, a lot of times you have partial information. So you're searching on partial information and sometimes you get lucky because people that will do this type of stuff, they'll go to cemeteries and they'll get all this information and gather it and put it in, in data form onto a website. Yeah, right there. Before we left, 
and we were looking at some of the grave markers in the, in the county section. There were a few markers with like partial information, missing information, and then you started to uh, ask me to start to take photos of those so that you could then put those on that probably the same website or similar website. Mm -hmm. I guess it's probably it's called, kind of a... The one that I found him yeah. on was called Find a Grave. I can take that information, that very scant little bit of information, but at least it has a location on it. And on the county ones, these are the pauper's graves. These mm -hmm. are, they could not find relatives, so they, the county buried these people. Yeah, so we'll be uploading information that we took mm -hmm. into that. And uh, just as somebody helped you in the past, maybe we'll be able to help somebody find somebody that they're connected to by doing the same thing as well. Yeah, so. and, and it was one of those things that the promise was kept. There was a little bit of closure. I knew my uncle well. He was uh, a great uncle to me, and it was kind of that goodbye, and, mm -hmm. and I needed it, so it was a good thing. So that's kind of what we ended up doing over a period of 28 hours there's numerous what I would call even like epic trips that we've taken. I am equally as happy to get in the car and experience something different. And that's kind of a little bit what this trip was like. And even though it was compressed into about a day and a half, we went to a new place to eat that we had spied before. We saw this new town, this new old town that we never heard about before. Saw new vistas on roads we hadn't been to before on our way to Kingman. And I came back felt like we had a fulfilling weekend and it felt so much longer to me than just 28 hours it felt like we had been away for maybe three days you can hop in the car and I bet you within a hundred miles of where you live there's probably 50 places you've never been to before